Yo, 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 what's up everyone? We're doing another free-to-play friendly guide today. Uh, I got this idea inspired off a Reddit thread I read. Uh, somebody was wondering just how to get the bottom chest in normal Hydra as painlessly as possible. So I thought I would make this lazy man's guide to getting Mithrala. Um, for players like myself who don't want to learn the Hydra mechanics and just want to put in a team that can... Where are we? Oh, I'm in normal, <laughs> normal clan boss. Okay, so they just want to find a team that can get the 1.66 mil from the novice chest and not necessarily invest time into building specific Hydra champions or learning how the fight works. So that'd be a neat idea just to show you uh, a couple of options you have in terms of team builds that can get you to the bottom chest. Now this first team, um, you just put in nukers. You have your Arbiter, increase attack, decrease defense, and then four nukers. Uh, it doesn't matter who the nukers are. I could use my Gallic here and my campaign farmer. And this could be a War Maiden. I don't have War Maiden geared up though, so I'm just going to throw Deacon in. So the basic premise of this idea is you just buff everybody's attack, drop the Hydra's defense, and nuke. Having uh, War Master on your champions is going to help. Having... Yeah, that's it. Just <laughs> War Master or Helm Smasher, whatever you got. Put a bunch of nukers in with drop defense. They're all going to die repeatedly because they're really squishy. As you'll see in just a moment once they're done taking all their turns. Now, Arbiter, you want to make sure... Okay, that was a big time misclick. I was going to say, you want to make sure you don't attack this head right here, the head of Torment. Otherwise, you're going to get feared. And then when you need to uh, revive your team, she won't be able to do it. <laughs> if you don't have Arbiter yet and you're trying to do this a little bit sooner than Arbiter, you could use Jamarsa. She could probably work in the same position. That would, of course, require you to do the referral accounts. So as you'll see, you notice they're dead. Arbiter revives, followed by her heal and turn meter boost. And then just get back to Nukin. I'm not using Deacon's turn meter boost on purpose. So I just want to show you that it's actually really easy to do it without any specific champions at all. Also, if you can, I don't know how, how much resources you get from farming Iron Twins, the really low level stages. Um, I already had a pretty well-developed account by the time they came out. But if you can get any blessings on your champions, get a level 1 Brimstone on Arbiter here, and it should help out pretty tremendously with the damage. Okay, so I've saved my Arbiter's Revive here. And then you just revive them all. Turn meter boost heal. And get back to Nukin.
If you've got any max HP nukers like Royal Guard or Husk, uh, you can replace any of these damage champions with those guys and it'll make it a lot easier. But if your goal is just to get bottom chest on normal to start collecting Mithrala, it's really quite simple with this type of setup. Relentless set, Lifesteal set, Savage set, any set works. I'm going to save her turn meter boost for after the revive. Always the best way to play Arbiter. I was hoping that would kill uh, Aethel there, but not quite. As you can see, I'm just ignoring all the Hydra mechanics. I'm just focusing on one head. And there's the 1.6. So you can keep going with this. Uh, if your team is built really well, it, or if you have like Royal Guard Husk, uh, or, or a better damage dealing champion, you can probably get this to a one key normal once you have the decent gear. Okay, so there it is. You get the, you get the idea. Now, the second team uh, is going to just be Drexthar and Arbiter. And then you just add in whoever, whatever support champions you have. Uh, if you have Rosin, you can throw it in. If you have Archmage Helmet, you could throw it in if you want. But mainly you're looking for healers. So, like Apothecary, uh, Broadmaw for a secondary Reviver. And yeah, that's honestly, that's good enough. If you have a uh, champions, like obviously if you've got Akoth, he would be really good. Reliquary Tender would be really good. Doom Priest would be really good if you've pulled him. Mordecai, any form of AOE HP burn is how you're going to do your damage. But for, uh, for this particular one, I'm just going to show you this setup. You could also throw in Jizzo if you get him built to level 50 and put him in like high resist, tanky, with enough accuracy to land his provoke. He can be helpful in a team like this as well. Personally, I didn't want to invest resources into building Hydra champions early on. I think it's kind of a waste of resources. Because you're slowly going to build up champions for every other part of the game. And then you'll just be able to naturally slot them into your Hydra teams. So here's why Jizzo is so good. He, he puts out these buffs so that one person has more buffs than the rest, and then he can provoke. So Provoke will prevent your team from getting cleansed if you provoke uh, Head of Decay. And then with Drekstar, you're just hoping to get hit. Which he hasn't got hit yet, unfortunately. Okay, there's an HP burn. And the reason why Re Reliquary Tender and Doom Priest would be good is look at all of these friggin' fears. That's really, it really slows down your damage not being able to uh, take a turn. 
If you have an AoE HP burner, it's much easier to just apply HP burn and get your damage out. And then there's uh, the level one brimstone as well. You'll see it proc here in a second. Actually, yeah, you should see it proc right here. Uh, Apothecary, just try to heal. Okay, so ch check this brimstone. Oh, he just A1'd. I guess if you've got somebody close to death, you can bait them into A1. Or was he still provoked? Never mind. Okay, I'm dumb. Disregard what I just said. Um, Drexar also has a provoke. He can sometimes land on the head. But it's not 100%, so... Um, Arbiter can clear some buffs off. The, you just got to watch out. You don't use it right before you want to revive or else you might get your revive uh, canceled there. Secondary Reviver and Broadmaw. Okay, so, yeah, see Drexar keeps getting feared. So we're having a hard time getting the HP burns out. There we go. And then of course you get the cleanses coming through. So this is a really bad team for Hydra <laughs> in general. Like usually you'd want to be putting in better champions. Um, but the whole point of free to play friendly guides is just showing you how to do stuff with the base champions that you get. If you get champ if you get lucky and pull like a Geomancer or a Godseeker Aniri or a Venus or a Duchess or anything like that, uh, you'll definitely want to be making use of them. And as you develop in the game, you'll eventually be able to auto uh, Doom uh, sorry, Hydra normal. And Hydra Hard is pretty easy to manu uh, auto once you have a good team. So you see every time they take a turn with the HP burns, now that they're all back up, we get quite a nice chunk of damage going out. And I'm just going to hit auto and see what happens. We're close enough to the 1.66 that I'm pretty confident it'll happen by the end. If you're at the point in your account where you want to start learning how to farm Hydra more efficiently, I would recommend checking out uh, Nubkex. Nubkex on YouTube. He's got some really good uh, Hydra content. Goes over all of the the nitty gritty, the mechanics. You know, actually learning how to fight it instead of just going for the bottom of the barrel, bottom chest on normal. You know, I probably could have just full autoed this now that I'm looking at it. The thing you got to watch out for though is when someone gets eaten, 
You need to manually target them to make sure that you're attacking that one. But there's the 1.6. Doesn't require anything crazy. None of these champs have crazy gear on them. So I think you get the idea. Spread HP burns, keep everybody alive, and eventually you'll hit your bottom chest. So doing this every week, uh, you definitely want to try to get into a clan that kills normal Hydra. And doing this every week, you're going to get two to four Mithrala fragments. So 25 weeks minimum up to 50 weeks maximum. But generally, I mean, if you average it, say you get three a week, uh, 33, 34 weeks. So definitely not bad. I got mostly four f when I was collecting Mithrala, I got four fragments almost every week up until I was in the 80, 80s or something. So we'll take a quick peek at some of the gear. This is my hybrid arena slash dungeon arbiter build. So reasonably tanky, fast enough, some accuracy. Definitely Booker if you're going to use her anywhere other than Arena. And I would even consider booking her if you use her in Arena, especially 3v3. Really, really helpful having these cooldowns. I put her in Resistance Mastery. Uh, timely Intervention is probably a better option. I don't have her in a Resistance build, so this is kind of useless. Uh, here's my Drekstar. He's just in his lifesteal perception setup. Um, he's built for Doom Tower Hard. Again, if you're going to use him in Doom Tower Hard, do recommend booking him. Once you get Mithrala, you don't really need him so much, although he's still useful for specific bosses. Um, but for those bosses, he doesn't really need books. The books are more so for wave content. And then his mastery has got Giant Slayer to help with healing. And then some defensive. In terms of the nukers, uh, your decreased defense champ just needs speed and accuracy. A little bit of tank stats never hurts. And then when it comes to nukers, you can use whoever you want as long as they're geared for damage. Here's my Kale. This is the build I had on him all through the early to mid game. He's still wearing the same stuff. Of course, he's booked, and he's got War Master for clan boss damage and dungeon damage, which also helps him in Hydra. Gallic here, War Master. Uh, if you get the Awakenings on them, I would definitely go with Phantom Touch. It just adds a little bit of extra damage based on the champion's attack. 20% chance. So actually, those are probably really helpful for something like this too. Although, definitely not necessary. This is just a Faction Wars build. Again, with War Master and Lifesteal. Here's my campaign farming Bellaware. He's in a stun set because why not? Almost booked. I forgot I hadn't finished booking him. And I have him in Helm Smasher, but... I, I should have gone for Flawless Execution. Not a big deal. Uh, you could build War Maiden out. In War Master, put her in Life Steal, and she would work fine for Hydra as well. Apothecary, just in his uh, Relentless setup, decent tank stats, decent speed. I built him High Resist for Doom Tower bosses because I'm trying him out on a few different bosses there. And early game, you'll probably put him in Giant Slayer. But once you get to, if you're going to use them in end game content, you'll probably want to go for unshakable and defensive masteries, as well as his support healing masteries. Uh, other champs I used on Hydra in the early game was Shield Guard in Life Steal and War Master. I used Zephyr Sniper in War Master and Life Steal. Uh, so those champs can work as part of your nukers, nuker setup. 
if you have them leveled, but gen most accounts generally aren't going to level these champions because it's it won't be long until you get better options. And I think that was about it. So yeah, there's my lazy guide to getting Mithrala as soon as possible. And then once you have Mithrala, it really opens up your options on a free-to-play in terms of like 3v3 arena setups and just making PvE so much easier. Such a good kit. Hard crowd control with her hex and petrify, increased defense, increased attack. Can set up both attack and defense nukers. Full cleanse along with a shield and a strengthen buff. And then two poisons on her A1, 100% chance. Plus, uh, so easy to build. Triple perception set. Her passive turns her accuracy into resistance. So she's like impossible to debuff by any PvE content. So there's my lazy guide to Hydra. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I just thought it'd be fun to make a, a video that I haven't really seen out there before. Most content creators tend to actually teach you about Hydra in their Hydra videos. And uh, I just wanted to show you what kind of what I did to get my early Mithrala fragments. Anywho, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.